15 tips for home buyers on what not to do when you finally get a home under contract. Whether you're a first time home buyer or a 10th time home buyer, you need to know these 15 tips of what not to do. Some of these first time home buyer tips you haven't heard anywhere else and you'll hear for the first time here. And make sure you stick around to the end to number 15 because I bet you haven't heard this one. Hey there, Christian Walsh with Wire Associates. We're real estate agents based in Southern California, helping buyers and sellers and tenants and landlords during these crazy days in California and beyond. And this is a big update. Congrats, you're finally under contract on the home of your dreams. And if you're watching this during Housing Market 2021, that was no easy feat to get under contract. So congrats on that. But we wanna make sure that you don't end up getting kicked out or falling out of escrow unless you want to. And this is important to understand that these 15 things we're gonna tell you not to do could jeopardize the deal early on or later on and even after you've removed all contingencies and you are at risk of losing your earnest money deposit. So what could be worse than losing out on the house of your dreams? Losing out on the house of your dreams and owing the seller a bunch of money. If it's your first time here, we're glad you finally made it. Where the heck have you been? And if you were here before, thanks for coming back. Make sure you hit that like button and we'll get started. Number one is don't quit your job. And <laughs> this seems like an obvious one, but you will need the income from your job and your lender is gonna do a verification of employment to make sure you actually have that job and still have that job at the end of the escrow process. So this also includes, in addition to not quitting your job, you can't retire while you're under contract and on a home and you can't switch jobs either. Make sure if you're gonna do any of those things that they happen after you've closed on the house. Number two, make sure you don't plan an exotic trip out of the country coinciding with the close of escrow because for loan documents, there will be signatures involved and a notary. And it can be almost impossible, if not impossible, to find a notary in other countries. So you're gonna have to save that exotic trip for after the close of escrow. Number three, don't keep shopping your loan around once you're under contract. You're supposed to do that before you get a home under contract and choose the lender and then go straight through escrow with that lender. Now, in the event that you absolutely must have two lenders involved, you're gonna do what's known as double apping, which means you're gonna have to let your agent and the escrow or settlement officer know that you're working with multiple lenders and you're gonna to have to pay for things like two appraisals. So if you are going to double lap, go ahead and let them know right from the beginning, but don't be trying to switch horses midstream while the home's under contract. Number four, and we're gonna run through a few of these that sound a lot alike, but that is don't buy anything on new credit. So it's very tempting to wanna to go out and buy appliances and furniture, even a new car. For whatever reason, people want a new car to match their new house but absolutely do not apply for any new credit until after you've closed on the home. Number five dovetails into this, and you may have existing credit, and you may be tempted to go out and buy one of these things on existing credit. So appliances, a pool table, a couch, or a car, I guess you could put it on a credit card. Don't do that either. So whether it's new, or existing credit by buying something large, this could change your debt to income ratio, which is the amount of debt you have to pay for monthly as compared to your income. If that number's too high, if the debt is too high, this will invalidate your loan approval. So wait until after it closes to go out and buy any of these big things. Number six is an important one, and I almost made this mistake as well, and that is don't wait to shop for insurance on your home. So it's easy when you get all these stacks of paperwork when you get your home first under contract. You're gonna have paperwork from the real estate agents, from the escrow or settlement officers, and from the lenders. You're gonna have three big stacks of paperwork to go through, and in there, you're going to have a piece of paper where you fill out who you're going to get an insurance insurance policy through. So this is hazard insurance, fire insurance, goes by different names. Make sure early on that you start to shop for this because certain properties have actually had too many claims against them and it may be difficult to find insurance 
or there can be other intricacies or unique things like high fire zones. And that was something that happened to me and my home. It turns out, even though it doesn't seem like it, doesn't, you don't look around and think, boy, this is a high fire area. It is. So there were only certain places we could go for insurance. Luckily, we were able to get that in time. So make sure you shop early on for the insurance. And in many cases, if you bundle different insurance together, so your car, boat, motorcycle, and house insurance, you bundle that all together, there should be savings there. So start early on this. We're moving right along. I hope you're still awake. So number seven is don't move large sums of money around. This is somewhat rare, but some people decide to start moving funds from one account to another account for whatever reason. The problem is you're gonna to have to go ahead and the lender will have to source where all this money is coming and going from. So just don't do it. Other than sending in the earnest money deposit, I would avoid moving any large amounts of cash around. Number eight is a unique one and I've been in this experience as a real estate agent and that is don't buy multiple properties at the same time without clearing it with your lender. So in some cases, if you try to buy too many properties or you try to buy a personal residence and an investment property at the same time, this will cause a red flag and prevent you from getting one or the other. So make sure you run through the plan with your lender if you're going to buy more than one property at a time. Number nine seems like an obvious one. Don't stop making any payments. So don't miss any payments on any credit cards. Make any uh, existing home payments, any payments you have, make sure you continue to make those uh, so that you don't end up with a late on your credit report because the lender will double check your credit just before closing on the home. So pay everything on time. Number 10, don't co-sign for anything. So you may be tempted to co-sign on a car for someone else or co-sign for an apartment. Just don't co-sign. No co-signing while you're under contract for a home. This could affect your credit and it is as nice as it is and as much as someone may need it at that time, you're, they're going to have to wait and you're going to have to wait. Number 11, and this is good general advice, don't lie on the application for your loan and don't lie on any of the paperwork you're filling out. And in general, I guess my advice would be is just don't lie, period. So anyway, you can get in big trouble if you've lied on the application or lied any, on any paperwork uh, throughout the escrow process. So uh, truth is probably the best policy. Number 12, and this is a little bit counterintuitive, but don't pay off any debt. And the truth is you can have a good discussion with your lender, run this by them. Your loan officer is gonna help you figure out if strategically certain things should be paid off, but don't run out and pay off a bunch of debt without consulting with him or her first. This could change ratios, it could change your credit. Uh, some accounts may end up closing because you pay them all off. This could really uh, make things complicated. So run this by your loan officer before you pay anything off and see if there are recommendations on certain things you will have to pay off. Number 13, almost done. Do not ignore any paperwork that comes from anybody in the deal, but definitely don't ignore any paperwork that comes from your lender. So they will ask you for everything under the sun and then a few more pages. So just be prepared, especially as it gets closer to the end, after it's gone through underwriting, after somebody goes through everything that's been turned in and is checking a bunch of boxes, there will be more that they need. So make sure you're ready, especially closer to the end, that's when they're gonna ask for some of the final paperwork. Just be ready for it. Don't ignore and delay any of that because that will ultimately delay the closing potentially and potentially push it so you can't close. Number 14, this one seems obvious, but this does happen as well. Don't spend any of your money that you need for closing costs down payments or reserves. And reserves, in some cases, lenders will require that you have, for example, six months of mortgage payments sitting in an account before they'll close on the loan. Don't spend any of this while under contract and don't spend it before going into escrow. I've had that happen too. Just hold on to your funds, keep them separate, and then after the close of escrow, whatever's left over, then you can spend on some of those big ticket items. Number 15, and this is one many people don't know or think about, and that is don't liquidate your assets until you need to. So in some cases, you may be using stocks or bonds or retirement accounts, 
and you're going to use those funds from those accounts in order to pay for certain costs to buy the home. So down payment or closing costs. I would wait until after you've removed all contingencies, basically when you're ready in the deal to move forward, after you've done all your due diligence, then I'd recommend liquidating because the last thing you'd want to do is liquidate too early when you don't need those funds. If you fall out of escrow for any reason, the house doesn't meet your needs after due diligence, you may decide to back out, but then you've got a bunch of funds that you've liquidated for no reason. So that's my recommendation, and this is a unique one. Wait to liquidate your funds. Don't liquidate them immediately once you get the home under contract. But on the flip side, don't wait too long either, because you'll need those funds at the end. You have to make sure that they're there in sufficient time to close. And my advice on that is, liquidate and send directly to escrow or title, however it's done in your area. So you don't need those funds to come to you and then go to closing, just have them go directly for the closing. All right, so hopefully you're still with me, hopefully you're still awake. I hope you found this helpful. 15 tips for home buyers and whether this is your first time or this is your 10th time, like I said in the beginning, it's important to note these different things. Make sure you don't do any of these when you're lucky enough to get your dream home under contract. So leave your comments below if there's any questions you have or any tips, anything I missed, let me know below. Make sure you subscribe to our free weekly email newsletter where we cover topics like this. We've got over 1,300 folks who've subscribed through YouTube. So why don't you join them and you'll get that weekly email newsletter on topics for buyers and sellers and tenants and landlords. And remember, we can't give tax or legal advice, but for the most honest and up-to-date real estate advice, you subscribe to this channel. Thanks for tuning in. This has been Christian Walsh, real estate agent with Wire Associates, and I appreciate you.